To understand how this long chain forms, um, let's limit ourselves to just looking at the phi and the psi bonds. Actually, I'll make things even easier. Remember that Ramachandran diagram that there were just two or three regions that was happy. So let's take this amino acid and say it can kind of be in an A state or a B state, and I'll forget everything. This is trivial, right? It's two states here, multiplied by two states here, multiplied by two states here, multiplied by two there. <laughs> two to the power of eight or something, that's a piece of cake. The problem is that you have more than eight amino acids in a protein. And this comes back to that, what I mentioned, that the exponential function grows faster than you think. In this case, it's a power function, but it's similar. So if I have two states per residue, and then I have n residues, well, that means if I have 100 residues, remember, those were among the smallest proteins I had in that table, that's going to be 2 to the power of 100 different combinations. And that's roughly 10 to the power of 30, which is around the largest number you can represent in single precision. Let's assume that nature is super fast at testing things out here, um, that I can test one new confirmation per picosecond. Um, there is no way it's that fast, but let's just assume that. If I test one per 10 to the minus 12 seconds, that would mean that this would take 10 to the power of 18 seconds to test every single confirmation. Well, that's not much, just seconds, right? It's 30 billion years. The world is only 4.3 billion years old. So there is, no, there is no theoretical way for this chain to test every single possible confirmation. And yet it does. The person who first realized this, this paradox is Osiris Leventhal, who did those movies I showed you uh, in lecture two. And it's even called Leventhal's Paradox. So what Leventhal's Paradox says is that we know that this chain finds the thermodynamic minimum. Christian Amphis has proved that. And yet, there is absolutely no way for the chain to test every single possible confirmation. So how the, does it even find that confirmation? We don't know. One way or another it does, but it can't be brute force searching. Brian Robson did a fun cartoon of this many years ago, um, the, the great proteino making this jump that we have no idea about. And for almost 20 or 30 years, this had remained a gigantic challenge. Um, so we do know that the proteins do take the form, but how does the process happen? This is going to be super important if we want to engineer proteins. And there's been remarkable progress in this, I would say, the last 10 years. Uh, this re recently as 2020, we're now finally able to predict protein structures accurately. This is not going to be a trivial problem to solve. Um, it will depend on free energy, it will depend on things happening in a certain sequence, and of course, at the end, we are not necessarily going to do brute force searching. But to understand this hierarchy, we will have to go to the next step in studying the so-called secondary structure elements of proteins.